Welcome to episode 134 of the Clarity Compress podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today we're going to talk about measuring what matters most. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I talk about clarity. I talk about perspective. I talk about knowing that where the point is on the map, you are here, is the one thing that gives you perspective enough to get you to where you want to go. And measurement is something that's been on my mind. Measuring is something that's actually very similar to that principle of the you are here on the map, the clarity on the you are here on the map. And measurement is something that helps, I think, give us more perspective and more clarity. It helps us plan. It helps us course correct. It helps us stop doing things that are not good for us and start doing things, maybe things that would be better, or maybe even go back to something that was working. And now we know that the direction that we chose to take instead isn't working. So it helps us know, are we moving forward? Are we moving back? Are we growing? Are we shrinking? All of that. Are we making progress? So I think the concept of measuring is a really great concept. I think measuring in today's day and age is very, I don't know, we'll say convoluted in mainstream culture right now. It seems almost impossible to measure anything in any substantive way. We have so many situations. We have an election. We have COVID. We have decisions to make about kids going back to school. Are we going to play sports? All of these decisions are based on measurements. Just look at the data. Data doesn't lie. But I'll tell you what, maybe data doesn't lie, but statisticians, especially politically motivated statisticians, can make the data tell a bit of a whopper if they want to. So I took statistics in uh, college, like introduction to statistics. What I walked away with, and I think that was v the most valuable thing I learned from the class, was that the same exact piece of data can be made to look as if it's almost opposite results by the way you manipulate it, by the way you display it on a graph. And so no wonder it's really hard to figure out what we should measure, what does matter. Even if you're talking about like the pandemic, what matters? Is it deaths? Deaths are important, right? Is it cases? Is it tests? Whatever. Impossible to know because everybody has a narrative on what you should measure and why. So I started thinking down the line of, well, what matters enough to be measured? And whatever matters enough to be measured should be measured, but how do we do it in our own personal lives? How do we do that in our businesses and with our families? And how do we know that we're going in the way we should be going or not based on some sort of measurement? Now, like business and finance, right, this can be really easy or at least a little easier because we have things like revenue and profit. No, these macro elements make numerical sense. It makes sense to measure those. But there are also a lot of elements that have nothing to do with the numbers directly. I mean, usually in business, every decision does eventually impact the numbers. The correlation is sometimes hard to tie together. But there are a lot of other things that impact business, but more importantly, our own lives. So I, I looked up some quotes on measurement. I mean, I've heard a lot of things. Like, What's the measure of a man? We could say measure of a person, which is the intention of it, not just a man. But two quotes that I, I came across that I really want to highlight. The first is from Samuel Johnson. It says, the true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him no good. And you think about that when it's not a give to get situation. It's just a give to give. How does a man or woman, how does a person treat someone else who can't give them any benefit back. That's a pretty good measurement. The second quote is from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Also getting right to the core of it, saying what happens when things are tough? That measurement when things are tough is one that matters far more than when things are easy. So I think in life, in our personal lives, numerical measurements like how much money do I make? How much stuff do I have? Is it more than that person? Is it less than that person? How many followers do I have? I think that numerical level of measurement mostly sends us in two directions. And one is it can inflate our ego because really only tells us that we're doing good in comparison to someone else. What's a thousand likes? That's good, right? Well, I don't know. Not if I'm comparing myself to someone with 300 likes, and yeah, 1,000 likes is great. But how about someone who has 10,000 likes? Oh, man, if that's the measurement, oy. 
So these measurements, these things, money, stuff, likes, followers, etc., goes one of two ways. One way is it can inflate our ego if it's more than someone else. On the flip side of that, it can significantly deflate our ego if it's less than someone. And we all know there's always somebody with more. There's always somebody with more money. There's always someone with more followers. So if we can't use the numbers to really measure the things that matter directly or in large part, what do we measure? My suggestion is that we measure our legacy. This really breaks down into a micro and a macro sense. Measuring macro legacy is really difficult in the real time because it moves slowly over time and it changes over time and it affects things over time. But I think you can also measure your legacy in a micro standpoint. How did that conversation contribute to that other person? Did it contribute to them or did it take away? How did the way that I treated my family make them feel? What response did it get? Do my kids feel like I'm present? Does my wife feel like I'm listening? Here's a helpful illustration. At least it was helpful for me. Think of a boat and the wake that a boat makes. So this year was really my first year as a boater. So I spent a good bit of time on the water, which happened to work out really well because in a COVID world, boating is an amazing thing to do because you have space. And so as a boat's going through the water, you can look back and you can see the way the wake comes off the back of the boat and it starts to part and it starts to spread. So eventually you can get really far away from the boat and you can still be affected by the wake that boat put off. And obviously the larger the boat, typically the larger the wake. That's gonna be felt and move all the other boats because it's so powerful. And sometimes boats just puttering along don't leave much of a wake at all. So I think that your legacy micro and macro can also be like kind of associated with this wake. What is the wake that you left? I look at people like uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is a great example. One of the most brilliant minds of the 21st century invented the iPhone, something that is it's become an integral part of our lives. Invented Pixar, the Pixar image computer that revolutionizes entertainment and this whole ecosystem that revolutionized how we buy and consume media content, music. It's pervasive, right? We rely on our phones for everything. However, when I read his his memoir biography, whatever it was, the big fat one, said in there, like, why'd you finally agree to, to have a, a biography written and authorize it and all that? And he said, well, I wanted my children to understand why I did what I did. Now, from my perspective, that seems like a big loss. I would argue that our world and our way of life, our society, our family relationships are not any better because we have an iPhone. But I think if you get down to it, you'll realize that your life isn't actually any better. However, his family, the people that were closest to him, didn't know him, or even worse, had bad feelings about it. And from my perspective, the people closest to you should be the ones that you should get the strongest measurement from. And that's an indicator of your level of attention, your priorities. For me, a lot of the time that indicates, you know, my failure, failure to connect, failure to slow down, failure to lean in and give my family the attention that sometimes I give people that aren't my family. I don't love to admit that, but it's the truth. Sometimes business takes over. Sometimes, you know, the things I do on social media and try the connections I'm trying to make with other people sometimes overarchingly reach into my personal life and pull time away from the families or my family and the people that I've committed to in the deepest way. So how do you measure what matters? I say you start with the relationships closest to you and you look at your legacy, the legacy of today, the legacy of last week, last year, last decade. And eventually, as we go through life, the legacy will get clearer and clearer. And then the ultimate measurement happens when we breathe our last breath and we cross the finish line, and we live our last day. And only then will we actually be able to measure what matters most, because we're playing for a horizon that we'll actually never see the other side of. The goal is marching in the direction that we should march. So I hope that that landed a little bit with your, with your soul today. I hope it helps you reframe and look at some of the things you're doing and some of the ways you're measuring yourself, measuring others. In this world of total political and social craziness, why don't we like measure ourselves on how we contribute to other people instead of yelling so that they can hear our perspective and our hurt feelings? What can we give? Now, what can we get? Thank you for spending some time with me today on episode 134. May we all measure what matters. I certainly count part of my measurement and my micro legacy. All of you that pay attention, all of you that interact with one another and with me, and hopefully all of us that take a step forward together. See you next week. You just gotta love some.